Hello again, I am Blunty, and if you haven't seen the first video of this series of Ryzen 5 CPU vids, I'm going to ask you to check it out, please. It'll give you some useful context in how I approached my testing and gameplay. Now, amongst the things that AMD bragged about during their reveal of the Ryzen CPU line is how good they'll be for streaming. They even had a live demo of it happening. Cherry picked, of course, to make sure that the Ryzen was outperforming the Intel one. But between having more cores and more threads and certain enhancements in the design right at silicon level that directly apply to encoding live video streams, AMD say they do it better and easier and faster and whatever adjectives you want to apply there. So what you're seeing on screen here is the 1600X versus the i5 in my own main rig that I currently use to stream with. Both CPUs are overclocked. Playing is Watch Dogs 2 alongside OBS for encoding the stream, and this current test is on a 1080p screen. The game is running windowed 720p. OBS is set up to a 720p stage using window capture with no scaling, generating a 6000 kilobits per second software encoded H.264 MP4 file. So basically doing exactly the same workload as it would be squirting something out to Twitch at the maximum allowable bitrate. And in a moment, I'll show you the game running on a 1440p desktop, 1080p windowed, and OBS scaling that 1080p down to 720p, 60 frames per second stream. Which is, by the way, the arrangement I prefer for single monitor streaming. The reason, of course, why you want to run the game windowed is so you can see what you're doing with OBS, so you can have the chat room window up, all that kind of stuff you want to do while you're streaming to make a good stream. Now, I chose Watch Dogs 2 because it's a game I have streamed live previously, and I have noted it for being a bit of a CPU hog, making it a bit of a pain in the ass to get everything running smoothly on a single PC streaming rig. There's two things to note about the Ryzen is doing here compared to my heavily overclocked i5. Firstly, the Ryzen isn't having to max out any of its threads, while the i5 is basically just pinned dead to the wall, 100% usage every second. Also, OBS itself is using less of the overall CPU time. Now, this is down to having more threads and possibly even AMD's silicon level optimizations for exactly this kind of workload. You'll also note that the in-game frame rate is significantly higher on the Ryzen. The i5 actually struggles to get close to even 50 frames per second, while the Ryzen strolls along, whistling a jaunty tune, keeping things in the mid-70s on average. And frame rates aside, the game feels more responsive on the Ryzen. With the CPU constantly maxed out, face shoved against a brick wall, the i5's gameplay and input responsiveness starts feeling just a bit laggy. It's not super terrible, it doesn't ruin the gameplay experience, but you can absolutely feel it. On the Ryzen, under normal conditions, I would recommend locking the game to 60 frames per second while streaming like this. Firstly, 60 frames per second is the maximum your audience can even see from a Twitch stream anyway. Secondly, it means you can save even more overhead. This is, after all, the most basic setup for streaming possible. Most streamers, including myself, will have layout overlays and text overlays to personalize and brand their stream. Also things like scrolling text for the latest subs and tippers and a webcam up there, of course. And all of this stuff sucks up even more CPU time. So at the end of the day here, the AMD has a very, very clear lead above the i5. The stream quality itself is basically identical as it should be, with a software encoder and the same settings, resolution and bitrate. However, while it's not reflected in the in-game FPS, you'll see the stream itself dropping frames and stuttering more often on the i5, as the maxed out CPU just has no room left for the video encode if things get tough. Now, some of you at this point may be asking why not remove the software encoding load on the CPU by using the GPU to do it, or AMD's or Intel's specific on-chip video encoding hardware technologies. And the answer to that is simple. At the low bit rates required for streaming, all three of these hardware-based encoders suck. They generate blockier, uglier streams, while software encoding keep things much cleaner and crisper. The hardware encoders are great at higher bit rates. In fact, I use the onboard NVIDIA one for recording local gameplay for my YouTube videos all the time. It's awesome and doesn't hinder general system performance at all. But for streaming, yeah, software all the way for the best looking stream possible. Now, when it comes to running a 1440p desktop so I can play in 1080p while asking OBS to scale down the window capture to 720p for the stream, the story is actually very similar, but less pronounced. 
The in-game performance comes much more closely into line, in fact, as at this stage other bottlenecks in the system, like the GPU, come into play. It's also asking OBS to work much harder, because now it has to resize the gameplay and then encode it for Twitch. But again, we're seeing that the Ryzen still has some overhead left. It's not running any core or thread to 100%, and OBS itself is sucking up less of the overall CPU cycles than the i5. Now, performance at this level can and likely will improve on the Ryzen side of things as optimizations are made for its larger collection of cores. You also might be seeing there is some stuttering in both streams this time, and for practical purposes I would be doing some fine tuning to eliminate this, but for the sake of an apples to apples thing here with the earlier 720p tests, I've left everything else set up identically here. And to be frank, at some point if and when you start taking streaming more seriously, chances are a GPU upgrade is one of your first priorities, which will remove a bottleneck in this test setup anyway and help things run even smoother. But the story is, if you're looking to build a gaming slash streaming rig, but you're on a controlled budget that doesn't stretch to the more expensive enthusiast level Ryzen 7 or Intel i7 series, which are, if money is no object, the better choices for that kind of setup anyway, but you know what, money is an object for almost all of us. So you'd be foolish if you didn't very, very, very seriously consider wrapping your new streaming rig around the Ryzen 1600X. Also, because beyond what it does for streaming directly, if you then want to do stuff like make stream highlight videos for YouTube, or indeed do pre-recorded material for YouTube alongside or in place of live streaming, the Ryzen 1600X seriously outclasses the i5 when it comes to processing video, which will make your editing process zippier and encoding your final upload ready video much faster. Stay tuned though people, I'm not even done digging into these new chips yet. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time. Yeah, squad, stand by. We're swinging back around.